So it's 8.30 and just waiting for mum and dad in Ashby de la Zouche. But it's quite an exciting day today because I'm actually getting the plane. And I'm on my way to Ashby de la Zouche and I can't wait. Uh, it's been so long so I uh, was a bit worried that I wouldn't get across because of the quarantine. Uh, that was could have been put into place but it hasn't. So I'm just so pleased uh, that uh, this afternoon I'll be flying back from Cox on to East Midlands. And then I'm hoping that I manage to get back again. That will be the big question. But uh, hopefully it should be OK because the harvest is quite uh, early, actually. It's going to be an early harvest, but really good to see you all. Yeah, is it really, really hot in the UK as well? Um, you can see here, so just a quick uh, look at the weather. All a bit cloudy up there. It's quite cloudy, quite muggy. It's about 22 degrees. Uh, if we look over towards the coast, uh, that's where all this cloud is coming from. So it's a sea breeze. Uh, and the sea breeze, uh, it's actually quite good. It's not, it's not that windy today. Uh, the marin isn't really blowing, but it's just this gentle uh, breeze and it's bringing this damp, humid hair, 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 air uh, over into our valley and that's actually quite good for the grapes when they're ripening um, coming up to harvest it's not too hot it, this will probably burn off by this afternoon though and we'll probably get up to about 28 but let's have a look where we are we're in one of my favorite vineyards I thought I'd just bring you up here for the view to show you the view so if you've got your tea towels out here we go this is where we are we're in Les Peace Peace what a wonderful name for a vineyard. Apparently that means pine trees, if you're wondering. But there you go, Les Peace. And now let's just put it into situation for those of you who have been to the area. If you drive down there uh, between the gorge, that's an amazing limestone gorge. And it goes to the wonderful little tiny village of Padern. I think there's about 50 people that live in Padern. But that's that way. After Padern, you've got Quillon. Uh, and on to Foix and behind that uh, the Pyrenees and Toulouse. Looking here into um, up the mountain this time, so this is looking towards the Roussillon. So we've got the Roussillon behind me uh, and then if we pan round, you can just see in the clouds, this is the Chateau d'Aguila direction right in the background. And then the mountains behind that, those cliffs are the Mediterranean villages of Le Cat, La Palme and Fitu. It is beautiful, isn't it? it? It's gorgeous, even though it's really cloudy, it is just absolutely stunning. And I've been up here for about 10 minutes just waiting for you uh, to join me. And it's so quiet and peaceful, it's just lovely. And here, so over there, you've got the Chateau d'Aguila. And then behind those hills is Narbonne. So if any of you have been to Narbonne, uh, that's about an hour and a quarter there. And Tuchong is in the foreground. So you've got Tuchong, a village where I live. I've lived for the past 25 years. Uh, just 800 people up here in the wilds of the Corbière here. And then let's pan round to this amazing mountain here. This is the Tosh mountain. The top of it just peeking out from the clouds this morning. Um, it rises up to 900 meters and uh, it's a limestone mountain. And that's great for keeping the water. So there's lots of underground water. Although this is like one of the driest areas in the whole of France, um, there is a reserve of underground water in this mountain and actually the water in Tuchon comes from this mountain from the underground streams um, but we don't irrigate so all of my vineyards as you know now I've got 15 little tiny plots at Domaine Jones and none of them are irrigated at all so it's all dry farmed uh, the vines are all old vines in my tiny plots just pick up my tea towel stick it in my shorts and let's get rambling. So I wanted to bring you to this little vineyard here, firstly for the view, because I just love it. Uh, it's actually the main road here from Touchon to Padern. So that's a village of 800 to a village of about 50 people. But it has been really busy this morning. And uh, it's, this is a Grenache vineyard. Oh, look here. Look here, there's... Um, do you re anybody recognise this? 
So that's a herb we've seen quite a lot of. Oh, it smells delicious. Really aniseedy. This is actually wild fennel. So wild fennel. And then I'm in a Lispice is the vineyard and it's actually a Grenache vineyard. And uh, the vines are 70 years old here. And I just wanted to show you what's in store for us for picking during the harvest. If any of you have any questions, please put them down in the question box at the bottom. Yeah, Dan, that was wild fennel. So here we are right in the vineyard and uh, here you can see what's in store for us for the harvest. So just standing here, I have in front of me a lovely bunch of uh, red Grenache. I'm just going to nip over here. It's a bit of a tiny vine here. So let's go to this one. And next to it, we have a bunch of white Grenache. So, and somewhere else, as we walk through, there's some grey Grenache too. So we actually have three types of Grenache just in this one vineyard. Look here, so that is. And then next to it, we have red Grenache. So it's majority red Grenache. Um, but we will be, this is going to be one of the first vineyards that we're going to pick and we're actually getting quite excited or panicky um, because the harvest is going to be really early this year. So instead of picking around about the end of August, we're actually thinking of picking probably at the end of next week. So um, it's all panic stations here. I haven't got, the, the cold system has broken down in the winery at the station. So uh, that's a bit of a challenge to get that ready in August now and get it up and running because we can't start picking until we've got our cold system working in the winery. But hopefully, fingers crossed, that's going to be sorted this week. Um, and then we're going to start picking probably next week. Um, which is like just around the corner. So we're, this will be one of the first ones, but we're going to come in and we're just going to pick the white grapes. So, look at those, it's just beautiful. Good to see some new people on here. Bjorn, good to see you. Lisa, great to see you, Lisa. You haven't missed much. This is quite a quick ramble this morning. Oh no, I was going to say, this vineyard has been saved from, what's this? Who's been in my vineyard? And this is like the most dangerous time of year for them. This is uh, left by the wild boar. And it's the most dangerous time of year for wild boars to come into our vineyard. Uh, basically, they can hoover off a whole vineyard. If they get into one where the grapes are ripe, they will actually eat all of the grapes uh, and I was looking around this morning there's not too much damage let's have a look look at these these are lovely that's Grenache green you can see the lovely pinky color and it, even here see some of them are golden and some of them are pink on the same there's some still ripening up here so some of them are still in Varese on the reds lovely here we go lovely bunch here's some white grenache so it's about two thirds red and a third white and grenache uh pink grenache gray grenache so we'll come in and pick those first and then oh i was talking about the wild boar this is wild boar damage here look that is typical who's been eating these grapes you see they sort of hoover them off and then, yeah, and more signs on the floor. They will drop the bunches on the floor as well. So these mines, white grapes, must have been particularly ripe and just been hoovered off. Yeah, anybody got a shotgun? That's what we need down here. So coming down. Also this vineyard, it's, um, I call it like sort of a hero vineyard because back in 2016, there was a big forest fire that swept through Touchant and Pazol. That was um, started apparently, well no one knows exactly how it was started, but it was a really hot day. It was in September, really, really hot. And it was windy as well. We had the north wind blowing. And when it's like that, it's just like an oven, like a fan oven. 
and a fire started actually down this valley here. So this is the way to Padern. A fire started here, came up the valley, and then it actually split into two. So you had one part of the fire that went this way. And look, you can see the trees here. They're still dark black burnt trees. So the fire literally went around my vineyard. And these vines were amazing because vines are really good uh, fire stopping uh, plants. So the fire came right up to the edge and this vine actually stopped the fire from going any further down on the bottom of the valley floor. Uh, we did lose grapes that year. It was the first couple of rows were completely singed, but they've actually come back really well now. So this was the fire that came along here on the way to Paziol, but then another part of the fire started and went along the bottom of the Montoche right up to the village of Touchon and was actually threatening to go down into the village of Touchon. Uh, so that was a scary night. I think we had about 800 fire people here trying to put the, ooh, trying to put, just spotted them, the fire out. And it lasted a couple of days until they really got it under control. But scary times when it's that close. I think we've, look, more. So this vine hasn't actually got a, um, an electric fence around it uh, because we're going to pick it quite quickly. But perhaps, so they've had a feast. Lots of it, and more wild fennel here. So these grapes, when we pick them, it's Grenache. These will go into my fitu. So these, this little vineyard, Grenache, uh, red Grenache, will go into my Domen Jones fitu. As you know, fitu is the major appellation in this area. Uh, the name comes from the village of fitu down on the coast, but there's actually eight other villages that can produce fitu and a tushan is one of them so the two the fitu i make is a blend of carignan grenache and syrah so this is where part of the the blend will come from the grenache old vine grenache 70 year old grenache oh so pretty the wild herbs here you can see where mignon did a really good job on the plowing so lovely and plowed really bouncy open airy soils those beautiful oh jilly you like my feet too do you has anybody else tasted my feet too so it's it's quite a full-bodied but so elegant and soft style of feet too and just so you can these the red wine grapes are quite a way off still some of them are still undergoing their raison so not quite finished that and here so a little vineyard fig tree, vineyard fig tree here and some elderflowers I think just next door to it. And here is my wonderful Diane just up here waiting for me. So it's quite a quick ramble this morning because as I mentioned at the beginning I'm off to the UK, I'm off to Ashby de la Zouche and it's actually my mum's 80th birthday on Monday don't tell anyone so perhaps we could all send my mum a little birthday cake and say happy birthday Liz in Ashby de la Zoo she's going to be 80 on Monday so I can't wait to get there and say happy birthday um, let me have a quick look at the questions and I have a question for you as well so I have a question for you too, and the first person to uh, name, to write up the name of the vineyard I'm in this morning wins a sachet of wild herbs. So lots of birthday wishes, mum. Happy birthday. So how do you determine, here's a question from Adam, how do you determine the most appropriate time to harvest? It's all down to uh, the ripeness of the grapes and when we actually want to pick them. So how ripe do we want them? We want maximum ripeness on our grapes, optimum ripeness. So we will come in with a refractometer probably uh, next week and ch just check the sugar content with a refractometer. But then it's all down to taste. So we will be coming in uh, with Jean-Marc and we'll be tasting the grapes from each different vineyard to see not only if the sugar 
uh, content is there but also if the skins are ripe so you really need to get the skins right not just the pulp in the fruit so that's quite a big job and we can't pick until the man says yes so Dan on form again this morning looks like you just won the competition so some wild herbs probably the last wild herbs of the season in actual fact because if we're going to start um, picking soon uh, it, this could be the last ramble out in the vineyard. Do the grapes taste like what the end wine tastes like? Oh, no, they don't. Well, for me, there's only one grape variety that really tastes like the end product, and that is muscat. So if you've ever tried my muscat, it's really, when you drink it, it's sort of a sweet but very light style, so only 10% alcohol. And the balance in that wine is just like the balance in the grape. So that really does feel like you're munching into a big bunch of muscat grapes uh, that's uh, delicious and no the others there with the process and making wine it's difficult you can tell when you're trying a grape in the vineyard which variety it is mainly from the skins and the thickness of the skins but then it's quite difficult afterwards there's uh, the resemblance sort of you lose that but oh uh, ne next time whoa I have to think about this. I'm going to be back next Tuesday. So the next ramble is going to be a week today when I get back from the UK. So a week today. But after that, we are going to be going into the winery. And if I could only let you smell the wonderful aromas that are going to be happening in the winery, I'm going to try and describe them as best I can during the harvest. And I'll be doing two lives a week from the winery. So um, I wanted your help as well. Please, if anybody's got an idea for the name, this has been the Vineyard Rambles. Uh, we're now going to go into the winery and actually see the wine, the grapes turning into wine. If anybody's got an idea for a name on that, please put it up on the screen. It'd be really good to have some, uh, some inspiration from you. So uh, I'll be back next Tuesday. Um, next Tuesday, I'll be doing my vineyard ramble. Uh, you'll excuse me for Thursday, but I'm going to be up in Ashby de la Zouche celebrating my mum's birthday. Back next Tuesday. Uh, and then from there, we'll see exactly where we are with the harvest. And then probably we will be actually in the winery after that. So if any of you winery wanders. Oh, yeah, great. Like the, uh, the word play on that, Dan. That's really good. So that's me signing off from here. Uh, congratulations, Dan. Uh, for winning the last sachet of wild herbs from here. Thank you all so much for joining me.